Hey, good morning, everybody. Kyle here, classfordespairs.com. This is going to be the second part series of my Instagram and YouTube videos. And today we're going to finish the other tappet block. Uh, I finished the other tappet block last night. This is the Thruxton style tappet block, so we can run the large three inch lifters on my 350 barrel for my race bike. So essentially, this is a spare barrel. It's experimental. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to use the uh, bore gauge there, and we're going to set it up in the micrometer. We're going to find the inside diameter of this hole. Then we're going to add one thousandth larger, and which that is basically going to be the press fit that we have to make the OD of the tappet block. So let's get that measured, record our dimension, and then we'll head over the lathe and we'll start turning the material. I will be using a C630 bronze material. When I'm trying to find the inside diameter of a hole. I used a bore gauge and I zero out the indicator. So right now it's at zero. So basically right now we're essentially checking if it's out or round and we're gonna use that arrow at zero to actually find out what the dimension is. So when I install it, I count how many revolutions passed so one, so basically two. So it makes one trip all the way around, and then I put it inside the micrometer and I count. That way we know that that's the right dimension. Um, I've been in many situations where you think you're at one dimension, and then when you check it, let's say it goes another revolution, and then you're off by, let's say, 10,000. So the, the whole diameter is 1.1. 1 .1 eight four seven five you can just disregard that it's not a big deal um, so it, what i need to make the od of the uh, tappet block is 1.1857 1 so the 1.1857 1 figure is basically one thousandth larger than the hole so that's going to give us the one thousandth press so what i'll do is when i'm turning the material on the lathe i'm going to use my micrometer i'll measure the od and we'll get it as close as we possibly can to retain that one thousandth press fit all right, so now that we have our dimension, now we're ready for turning. All right, so we have the tappet block in the vise. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the center based off the OD, so that'd be half of the diameter. And then we're going to butt up against this bottom shoulder here, and then 437,000 from the base of this shoulder to the center uh, is going to give me the location in which I am going to bore and tap it. Uh, so the threads, like shown here, is 516 by 26. So I got my edge finder here, We'll find the two dimensions that we need to, or the, or the one location based off the two areas that we need to check, and then we're going to uh, bore it and tap it. So we are milling the bottom side of the tappet block. This is going to be the slot, which is going to be three quarters wide. I'm lifting up the knee on this side here. Should be able to start to see the holes come through. And there's one right there. So here's a finished tappet block, all machined up. I also took it to the honing machine and honed the inside diameter out. So I'm running a thousandths clearance. Also deburred the edges. There's some sharp edges here. I still have to do a little bit of deburring around here. I don't want that to catch while it's being pressed in or um, pushed inside the cylinder barrel. But other than that, I'll put a new O-ring on here. Not that it's necessary, but I'll put one since it has a groove. We will put some lubrication around this tappet block and we will get it installed. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, it is time to install the tappet blocks. But first I wanted to go over a few things. Uh, the tappet block itself, I use Senna and Press Fit Oil and I lubricate the outside of the tappet block and the inside housing of the uh, board. The reason why I do that is because it's supposed to help with insulation and it does make a difference and it also prevents galling or sticking. So we definitely don't want that. Uh, the other, another thing that I do is on the installation tool, I use copper washers 
on each of the posts here. And that way it will act as a cushion and it won't damage the top of the tappet block or want to mushroom it. So anyways, we have everything ready to go here. Um, we're all good to install. So on the next clip, we'll go ahead and install them. And mind you, it's not really pretty. Uh, considering it's a press fit, you have to hammer them in. So it's not like something that they'll just slide in. So anyways, I'll show you guys. All right, one thing that I also wanted to mention is when you're installing the tappet block, you have to make sure that the hole is visually in line with this hole. Just because it's in line once it's installed doesn't mean that it is square to the lifters. Um, once it is installed, however, you can persuade the tappet block one way or another way to make sure that the lifters are in line. I do have an original tappet block installation tool and there's a cutout so you can put a wrench and basically use your brass mallet or however you want to do it, leverage, and you can rotate the tappet blocks while it's in the housing. Some guys will remove it, move it a tiny bit, and then install it again, but there's different ways that you can do it. Uh, obviously, this tool doesn't have the slots in it, but I'll cover the other one in a different video. This will be fine just to install it. So visually looking at it, it is in line, so we'll be good to go. And should slide right in. I'm gonna look at it one more time just to make sure. All right, right there, let's give it a good whack. sound tap and block is installed and it looks almost perfect in the center boom there we go like i said it's not pretty but we got it installed